Hi everyone, I am Sabida, Biology Teacher of K. Carmel Center School, Muhammad. Welcome to my new YouTube channel, S&S Bio Info. Today, if you are watching my video for the first time, consider subscribing. You can listen to the explanation of the chapters from classes 10, 11, 12, CBC Biology and don't forget to press the bell icon so that you get notified whenever I upload a new video. Let's move on to the video now. Hi everyone, welcome to my biology class. Today's topic is respiration. We all know that we get nutrients through nutrition. So what is the use of these nutrients in our body? Those nutrients are being used for various purposes. These nutrients are being used for producing new compounds in our body. Some nutrients are being used for producing energy in our body for various purposes. Not only for doing physical activities, for thinking, for doing many uh, say, uh, production of uh, many compounds in the body. We need a lot of nutrients and energy so that we get nutrients through this nutrition that nutrients are being used for producing energy and new compounds in the body. Then what is meant by respiration? Do you know what is respiration? Respiration simply uh, an action of breathing. Actually, respiration is also known as cellular respiration because it takes place in the cells in human body or in the cells of organisms body. Respiration is the process of releasing energy by the breakdown of glucose with or without oxygen. If respiration takes place with oxygen, such a respiration is called aerobic respiration aerobic respiration if respiration takes place without oxygen such respiration is called anaerobic respiration anaerobic respiration So, respiration is of two types, aerobic and anaerobic. Then what is the purpose of respiration? Releasing of energy. So, in both cases it happens. Then, uh, in both cases the nutrient is uh, used for producing energy. The nutrient is glucose. Glucose is a 6 carbon compound which is being converted into a 3 carbon compound called pyruvate in the cytoplasm. Thereafter, this 3 carbon pyruvate is converted into energy and different compounds with or without oxygen. Let's study more details about aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Now let us learn about how does the breakdown of glucose take place in different situations in different organisms. So look at this schematic diagram that is drawn on the board. See, glucose is a 6 carbon molecule. It's a nutrient. It's an energy giving nutrient in all living organisms. So, uh, glucose, the 6 carbon compound is converted into 3 carbon compound named the pyruvate in the cytoplasm of both prokaryotic and eukaryotic cell. You know, prokaryotes have a, uh, that, that um, no well developed uh, or well defined the nuclear membrane and the cell organelles. So, uh, in those organisms uh, that the breakdown of glucose take place in the cytosol itself, in the cytoplasm itself. In case of eukaryotes, half of the process take place. That means the breakdown of glucose to pyruvate take place in the cytoplasm and the rest of the process of oxidation of glucose take place in the mitochondria in eukaryotic cell. Now let's learn how uh, the pyruvate, the 3 carbon molecule is converted into different compounds in different organisms in different situations. First of all, in the absence of oxygen in yeast, you are very familiar with the fermentation. In fermentation, that uh, across the, the, the production of ethanol carbon dioxide uh, take place uh, that um, in the presence of uh, sugar molecule or glucose. So, this is an anaerobic pathway of uh, that, uh, uh, that glucose breakdown. 
then here uh, that uh, in the yeast cell it doesn't require uh, oxygen so in the absence of oxygen uh, the ultimate conversion of glucose to energy a little amount of energy is produced in the yeast cells for their further survival for producing new cells or new chains of uh, yeast buds then in case of uh, that uh, in our muscle cells sometimes when we do continuous physical exercise or work we always feel muscle fatigue then this is because of the lack of oxygen in our muscle cells so due to the lack of oxygen in our muscle cells then uh, that this pyruvate will be converted into lactic acid and releases a little bit amount of energy it is about 2 ATP molecules so here 3 carbon molecule pyruvate is converted into lactic acid uh, in the absence of oxygen in our muscle cells that means anaerobic respiration take place in some anaerobic organisms like yeast and also uh, the same process take place in our body in the absence of oxygen then in the presence of oxygen whenever the body cells get sufficient amount of oxygen aerobic respiration take place in every cell so in the presence of oxygen in the mitochondria of our cell uh, a large amount of energy is released large amount of energy is released along with the carbon dioxide and the water so this carbon dioxide is an excess uh, product is a uh, unnecessary product it is uh, being um, that uh, exhaled through our during our uh, breathing process anyway then you look at this uh, diagram in these three cases energy is released by the breakdown of glucose then what is the actual meaning of respiration breakdown of glucose hmm, to release energy with or without oxygen Without oxygen take place in anaerobic organism with oxygen in our body cells. Okay, is it clear now? Next, let's learn about the major differences between aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Uh, I draw two columns here, aerobic respiration, aerobic respiration and anaerobic respiration anaerobic respiration first difference aerobic respiration take place in the presence of oxygen while anaerobic respiration take place in the absence of oxygen so just I write only the point take place in the presence of oxygen takes place in the presence in the absence of oxygen absence of oxygen the complete breakdown of glucose take place in case of aerobic respiration uh, while partial breakdown of glucose take place in uh, anaerobic respiration then here second point complete breakdown of fuel fuel here means glucose complete breakdown of glucose partial breakdown of partial breakdown of glucose third point aerobic respiration take place both in the cytoplasm and in the mitochondria that uh, um, uh, half uh, process take place in the cytoplasm and the rest of the process take place in the mitochondria so it take place takes place both in the cytoplasm and mitochondria mitochondria you know mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell here the energy is stored in the form of ATP adenosine triphosphate then uh, here in case of anaerobic respiration take place only in the cytoplasm take place only in the cytoplasm 
because an aerobic respiration takes place in uh, uh, unicellular organs, it's like uh, some kind of anaerobic bacteria and uh, yeast. So they have no uh, mitochondria and well developed cell organelles, so that take place in the cytoplasm. Fourth point large amount of energy is released uh, nearly 38 ATP molecule. Then here small amount of energy is released. Small amount of energy is released. Uh, that is about 2 ATP molecule. You know ATP is ATP is adenosine triphosphate. It's a high energy compound. It's known as the energy currency of the cell because after the production of energy in the cell, it is uh, stored in the form of ATP. Whenever the body requires uh, energy, this ATP undergoes hydrolysis and releases particular amount of energy. That energy is being utilized for various purposes in the body. I have told you that ATP is the energy currency of the cell. You know that uh, during respiration, a large amount of energy is produced in our cells. Those energy is being converted into ATP in the mitochondria. Then again, whenever the body requires, this ATP undergoes hydrolysis. One mole of ATP undergoes hydrolysis. And it forms, it is converted into ADP and inorganic phosphate. Then uh, by, this process is called hydrolysis. One mole of ATP undergo hydrolysis and form as ADP and inorganic phosphate. Uh, this process, this breakdown of the ATP releases particular amount of energy. That energy is utilized for various biosynthetic activities of the body. So, it releases about 30.5 kilojoule energy. So, 1 mole of ATP releases 30.5 kilojoule of energy or 7.5 kilocalorie energy. Kilocalories. Is it okay now? I hope you understood what is respiration, what are the two types of respiration and uh, how does it uh, take place in different organisms in different situations. Thank you and have a nice time.